and this week we're doing something that has nothing to do with reptiles but it is animal related so stay tuned we're gonna get creepy and crawly if you don't like tarantulas this is probably not the video for you so recently I've been scratching this itch that I have about getting some more inverts I've always had tarantulas, I've always had cool critters. Recently I've got the bug to not only get a few more, but upgrade their enclosures. Found some really awesome YouTube channels. Um, the Dark Den, the Tarantula Collective, two of my favorite channels right now, hands down. I'll be sure to put a link in the description below. But, had to get some stuff for my existing little slings, and uh, so I got a couple new containers and kits. I also got a couple new critters. So I filmed some unboxing things. Um, I didn't like my intro on it, so that's why I'm doing this now. So we're going to show you some uh, some of that footage. Uh, it's going to be a little bit longer because I did some unboxing and then I did some rehousing of some of the existing critters. So we're going to take a look at that, and uh, I hope you enjoy. I did it real no frills, real quick and easy. I was too excited to set up the lights and everything. I just went straight for it. So um, I hope you really enjoy this. The animals and the enclosures came from Dalton Walker of Norse Creatures and couldn't have taken better care of me. Like fantastic animals, fantastic customer service, dialed in these enclosures for exactly what I was looking for and really, really hooked me up. So once again, that is Dalton Walker from Norse Creatures. I will absolutely have his description and information stuff down below. So um, yeah, let's check it out. All right, so what we've got here are four different types of invertebrate kits, like a full complete enclosure, substrate, decoration, hide, everything all in one for uh, very species specific individuals. So um, first off, they're, I'm just un unboxing them, but these are the kits. Uh, now Dalton has custom drilled all the ventilation and put together these kits specifically for the two species that I currently have that I am in need of rehousing. So he's not only gone through and done the work to make these dialed in for those species, but he's taking the time to talk to me and figure out my animals and, and get it just right. So each one is, is specifically for that. Now, on top of that, because I picked up a new species, um, that is here and he's given me the full kit for that individual at the appropriate size for that animal as well. Now for those of you who don't keep tarantulas or are not experienced when they're younger as spiderlings or a term you'll hear called slings, uh, it's much easier and it sounds cool, um, they can be very very small so big spaces are just like not very uh, efficient for you, the animal feeding and it's just kind of pointless. Uh, and they feel much safer in a smaller enclosure and it's much easier for you to find them. So as they grow, you, you upgrade them. And Dalton was, has once again put together a perfect kit, uh, totally dialed in for that species here as well. Um, so that's fantastic. Now, what I come to learn from the invertebrate community is that these folks really do it right. Whether they're breeding or keeping, they do it for the love and they share that love. And these individuals like giving out freebies or and they do it and they make sure like they don't just toss one on you but they make sure like hey would you be interested if i you know x y and z so a fourth kit has arrived now what i need to do is speak with dalton and make sure i know exactly what i'm doing for this he's made sure that uh if i wanted it a surprise we'd we'd roll with that so that's what we're doing so it's going to be a fun little surprise for me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this. I'm going to talk to him, make sure I know what's going on. And hopefully in the next clip, what you will see are these uh, setups completed. And I'll tell you exactly what's going on. All right. So right here are the two kits that I purchased from Dalton in order to upgrade my LP and my Red Rump. And uh, other than putting their existing water bowls in. I've sort of already set them up. Cork bark, little hides, that creates a little tunnel, some moss, leaf litter, fake plants, and these were all provided in the kits from Dalton, so he set me up perfectly. Now, the spider that I purchased, the uh, the P. Cambridge eye, 
Um, this is for that little sling right here, and he included everything that animal needed as well. So, full kits for these two animals will be upgraded. A full kit for the new purchase, and then he was very kind enough to set me up with this. Now it came uh, dry sand, and I added a little bit of water, mix it up, and this is true choro wood from Arizona, where, the, where this species is from. So this little kit right here is for the newest member of the family, an Arizona striped-tailed scorpion. So now what we're going to do is get these little newbies out, upgrade these two, and try and do it safely. The trusty tools at my disposal, a little catch cup, and some little friendly gentle tongs that have a nice little angle. I can also use this broad end to uh, encourage as well. So um, we'll just make sure this goes smoothly. Alright, <clears throat> so let's try and do this as uh, smoothly as we can. Slow and gentle is the name of the game. Once again, this is my Mexican red rump tarantula, also known as a Brachypelma vegans. This animal has a wonderful feeding response. And a beautiful, beautiful abdomen. new home for you know the next six months or so depending on whether it ends up being a male or female and how it grows but I'm very excited about this right here it seems to be settling in nicely all right now that we've got this little dude or dudette settled in we're going to do the next round and get my as the Adora Para Hibana out, also known as a salmon pink bird eating tarantula. These are one of the colloquially named bird eating tarantulas. Although they don't really eat birds. Maybe as adults they can eat like a, a baby.
Thank you, Dalton. On to the next one. All right, so the Salmopeus or Salmopeus, however you want to pronounce it, Cambridge Eye, has been known to be a little flighty. sort of out of camera frame built a little perimeter <laughs> I got my catch cup Some gentle tongs but as you can see little baby spider traveled just fine thank you Dalton alive and well these things are very small wonderful it's moving in there Hoping I can just encourage this little beautiful animal to just stay home without running all over the place. So wish me luck. So again, this is the Sanopeus Cambridge. I don't even know what the common name is. I said I'm not huge into common names, to be honest. Exactly what Dalton told me they do. <laughs> sending animals to folks without their knowledge and being unprepared and neither is Dalton. Dalton asked me many many times ahead of time if I was truly okay with this and he asked what my experience and level of 
keeping was with various species of tarantulas, scorpions, centipedes, all of the above. So he got a good range of what I keep. I told him how my room tends to sit climate wise. And, uh, and so I told him to surprise me within the parameters. And so here we are. So today I'm adding a new species of scorpion to the collection. I do have a desert hairy scorpion from Arizona. But this one is called a striped tail scorpion. Also from Arizona, another de desert species. Reported to be rather common. I'm going to try and get this scientific name right here, folks. So bear with me. But this species, I believe, is Parave Jovis spinigeris. Or Paravejovis spinigeris. Paravejovis spinigeris. Something like that. I'll make sure it's written up on the screen here. But this little dude, or dudette, why do I say that? That's very California of me. This little scorpion has traveled and got the nice little scorpion plex all set up. So let's see if we can get our new family member because these are members of the family into this new residence. So everybody meet the new member of my family of odd creatures. Now with scorpions, small pinchers and large telsons, the stingers, large stingers, small pinchers equals venomous, typically on the higher scale. They're all venomous, but the scorpions with big pinchers and small stingers tend to be not quite as bad. So this animal would be considered decently venomous. All tarantulas are venomous, all scorpions are venomous, everything you've seen in this video has been venomous. And perfectly legal, I might add. Anybody can keep these animals if they know what they're getting into. For me, I tend not to handle any of my tarantulas or scorpions. unless they're cruising and I gotta reclaim them. So, for me, I find these animals fascinating and uh, I hope you enjoyed this as well.